Okay, we can feel free to start whenever you would like. Okay, let me just uh, switch my screens here around and then um, we'll go from there. Okay, whoa, cloud mic. So, um, is that coming from yours? Is your sound off? No, oh, you're right. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, my name is Patrick Whitehead. Uh, I am one of the the teachers uh, at Fernley High School. I'm the department head, and uh, with me here is the other Patrick, uh, Patrick Billings. Uh, he teaches at uh, the high school just down the road from us in Silver Stage High School. Uh, and what we're doing here is we are um, going to be presenting something here that we've been doing in our district for uh, quite a while now, and that's the International Economic Summit. Uh, this is something that was brought to us um, from some outside of the state uh, and is something that we're hopefully going to, um, you know, you're going to be able to have a little bit of, um, of of understanding of where this can can be placed into a district level um, or even at a high school in order to uh, support what's already being done in your economics classrooms. Um, this is we use this at a 12th grade level. Um, but, uh, you know, down the road, it, it can definitely be, be used at different levels um, as uh, that level of economics starts to change here. Um, so just a little bit uh, behind why, uh, you know, this program, why we wanted to adopt this program uh, is really kind of centered around that idea that economics uh, is, is considered that dismal science and um, and why economics instruction is hard. For the most part, I um, mean, you know, I did a little background look here is between 2001, 2014, uh, people in majoring in economics was about 1.7%. Um, so uh, shock of, of, uh, of, of the century, a lot of people aren't majoring in economics. I don't have a, a, an economics major, uh, but again, I came into teaching and uh, was was uh, uh, asked to start teaching economics. And so probably like most economics teachers, uh, you were kind of the low man on the totem pole and um, and maybe got that. Um, additionally, uh, whether, you know, whatever state you're looking at, uh, standards for K-12 is, is usually very history rich. Uh, we, we have our students in our county, they take a, a full year of world, a full year of U.S. history. And so um, two out of those three credits that they earn are very history rich. And so uh, a lot of folks going into teaching and getting into it now, uh, a lot of them do come with that history uh, type background. Um, again, here, um, when we look, oops, yes. Um, so when we look at um, uh, why economics is still a little hard to is uh, if you're kind of like me, and I don't know how Patrick was, um, is uh, we were looking into, um, oh, let me admit you. Um, uh, looking into uh, when, when I came up to the high school, it's kind of that last man uh, or, or last teacher gets in um, where I came up, I transferred from middle school teaching, got into high school and they said, hey, great, you get to teach economics. And so um, sometimes uh, we, you know, as a teacher, you get thrown into that subject, didn't have a lot of background of it. And so in my 19 years of teaching, I've, I've kind of had to really take on and teach myself economics uh, which I've come to love. Uh, if I was had to go back to college, I'd, I'd probably be an econ professor or uh, go back and, and study econ. Um, also, uh, a lot of times if you're new to economics or or or, or it's being introduced to you, uh, we have this idea that uh, economics, the economics that we teach in high school is the same economics that we teach here in um, uh, in, in high school. And I have to tell parents and students this, uh, when we look at, um, when we look at the, the, the economics curriculum here in Nevada or at Lyme County, um, it is not the same that you would take in that micro or macro, um, level. And so a lot of parents I know kind of scare their kids into saying like, oh my goodness, I had to take this in college. And they come to us with a little bit of fear and, uh, being able to equalize that, uh, and show them that we're studying economics at, at a different level, um, the, the International Economic Summit really helps them um, able to, to do that. Um, a little bit of background on the actual summit itself. 
Um, this actually started in the early 1990s in an economics classroom in Idaho. A teacher, uh, same kind of backstory as me, she started teaching and uh, had to teach econo uh, an economics in a geography classroom. Um, didn't have an economics degree, didn't have a huge background in economics. And what she uh, quickly realized is that the students had very little background of international economics combined with that geography. And so what she did like we all do as good teachers is uh, we find ways to take the curriculum and fulfill those needs and, and those skills that, that students aren't uh, maybe as up to, um, up to par with. And so she combined the idea of economics and geography and created uh, this, this simulation that she used in her classroom. Um, and then it eventually was adopted uh, by the Idaho Council of Economics and then eventually Boise State University, uh, where she ran it through uh, Boise State University. And this is the first uh, way that we adopted it. Um, is Boise State would come out, they would train us up, and uh, the materials and everything were there. And so we utilized uh, kind of their packaging and their setup. Uh, since then, Boise State and the Idaho Economics Council have given up the rights to it. And so Lyon County, um, we purchased the rights a couple of years ago. And as of last year, the state purchased a five-year co um, uh, contract to the rights um, so that we can use all the materials um, still owned by the original teacher. Uh, and so um, we're here to kind of talk to you about what that looks like at, at different levels and capacity. Um, once we jump, uh, before we jump into this, I do want, uh, if you can either put into the chat box or chime in here, um, what at what capacity are we here? Are we teachers? Are we district officials? So if you can just hit your mic and just tell us. I'm a teacher teaching government and economics. For me, it was new coming into Nevada and Texas. One of us taught government. Somebody else taught econ. At the semester, we would swap kids. So I was government. The only econ I taught was what dealt with government. And yes. then I moved to Nevada, and they're like, hey, by the way, guess what you need to do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but the econ that I had in college at UNLV, like, yeah, Ben Stein was like exciting compared to my econ professor. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, I don't, I, I never, I didn't have a good econ professor like story or something. So for me, trying to figure out how to teach my kids, yeah, I'm always looking for new stuff. <laughs> it was pretty dismal, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, great. Thank you, Shauna. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, Nate, uh, you're a teacher as well. Good. Anybody else? Uh, do we uh, do we have all teachers? Do we have anybody else that's not teaching, has different level capacity? Another teacher. Great. Julie is a teacher. Awesome. So, um, and and the reason Patrick and I need to know this is uh, we we can take this training two different routes. If we if we had folks in here that weren't teachers, more district level, uh, we can pitch how to how to adopt the curriculum and roll it out. Uh, but uh, with the fact that we're all teachers here, uh, really, this is kind of uh, laying out what the summit is and really getting the the interest that you would then take with you. And then start applying a little bit and, and trying to get that moving either at your high school. Um, you, we do it district wide, but uh, this thing is, is super flexible where it can be run right in a, a larger school um, or a connection between a couple high schools. And so, um, you know, let's get into this a little bit so that we have an idea of, uh, you know, what we're talking about here. Um, and again, uh, like I said, uh, we brought this to Lyon County. Uh, it was brought to us around 2005, a, a teacher uh, came from a university that that was trained in doing this, and uh, he brought it on and started using it in his classroom. Um, it was introduced to the to all uh, Lyon County teachers, I think, around 2016, uh, and that's when we we saw this. We saw the summit process. And for me, I fell in love with it. It was about the time when I started teaching uh, economics, and it 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 was it it was very attractive. Uh, beginning in 2017-18, um, we have all of our Lyon County high schools that participate in this. So we do two summits a year. Every senior uh, economics student, um, they they have to go through and do this as a a, a way to get that credit. 
Lyon County has, um, we, we have uh, uh, made sure we required an economics credit to graduate. Jeez, uh, I've been here 19 years and it was even before then uh, that Lyon County required that. And I know um, some folks are talking about like, um, like Clark County and Washoe, not until the state said you had to have that half credit um, have, uh, have folks been, been teaching economics. And so this is a, a, a really good time and a good, uh, uh, set of, um, of resources and program to, to really get you kind of invigorated in that element of, uh, uh of, of starting to add a little bit more tool and toolbox to, um, to, to, uh, your economics teaching. All right. So, um, what, what the International Economic Summit is, uh, it is a project-based simulation, all right? It's a project-based simulation. And so with this, um, students in classrooms um, are going to develop an advisory team of three to four students. And so uh, it's broken down at the micro level to a classroom, and then you start to build up, then have other classrooms that have their advisory teams, and then in our case, a full district. Uh, really, depending on, on what level you want to increase that, um, it all starts right there in the classroom at, at teams of three and four. Um, what the students are is they are randomly assigned um, a high, middle, or low-income country in the world. We deal with real countries. Um, the, the, the way that the summit works, we have about 73 countries that um, the, the materials and everything surround, and uh, we have uh, a, a variety of high, middle, and low countries so that students become the advisor to that country. Uh, whether it is a, a, a group of kids that are getting South Sudan, a very low income country, um, or a student getting, um, you know, a, a United Kingdom, uh, they're all um, tasked with this idea of advising that country. And so they are ultimately looking to increase the standard of living of that country um, through uh, not only creating their own policies, basing it on uh, real data, hard facts, um, so we're getting students to go through really that economic, global, and national policy level of, of that. Um, the main goal overall is uh, to make those simulated policies. Um, the, the If you're asked, what are kids doing? They are learning the importance of how a standard of living um, and how it impacts uh, economic growth uh, and economic uh, sustainability. Uh, it is the same thing that we look at in the United States. Uh, we look, we're constantly looking at everything from our um, consumer price index to inflation to living standards. I mean, we've probably talked three times today about the high cost of living and food and fuel prices. Uh, what we're talking about is that standard of living. And so um, even in our economics classes, if we kind of boil everything down about American economics, we, we're really asking that question of, are we going to be able to live in the future at the same standard that we are now or in the past? And so really where we're looking to do this is uh, is through this simulation where they get to take on that advisory role. Um, really, it's a nine week classroom, um, mini, mini project uh, process. So this is um, something that you'll introduce about week nine into the into the economics classroom. They'll already at that point have uh, a background of economics, micro and macro. And really, this would come in at the at the uh, point where you start to introduce the macro and then joins the international, which a lot of times we don't we're not able to get. So we're kind of we're kind of uh, blending together macro and then international economics. And then that is what drives the, the international um, uh, summit. The culminating event, the thing that we do at the end is the summit competition. This is an on-site um, student active full day um, uh, uh, um, simulation that they go through. At this simulation, they bring their, uh, they've prepared uh, for nine, 10 weeks to go to here. Um, as we'll see further down in the presentation, they'll dress up in traditional wear. They have poster boards where they're presenting key facts. Uh, they have to join an alliance uh, with other countries. There is a mock trading session where they have to participate in a global trading simulation. Uh, they, um, uh, they have to, there's a debate section. So everything builds up to the to the competition level, um, which we'll which uh, we'll both we'll talk about here in a sec. Patrick is going to take you into some of the um, into the um, uh, other side of the project based simulation, what some of the bonuses are. Some of the positives. Um, yeah, just that. The so 
you can tie a lot of this into Nevada educational performance um, standards. So this does flow um, right into our NEPF standards. Um, when we tie in thinking about standard three, which deals a lot with our discourse and our discussion in the classroom, um, this is this is huge because we get the kids working together, compromising on trying to figure out what problems their countries are experiencing, um, proving with evidence how it is a problem, working together again, um, figuring out based on the United Nation goals that we have links to and things we can explain a little bit later, um, how they want to raise that standard of living. Um, so they'll explain again what, what they're going to do to solve it. Um, who are they going to use the help? Are they looking at alliances, the World Bank? Are they reaching out to the United Nations? Um, thinking about actually implementing it. So how much is it going to cost? What's the actual plan going to look like? Uh, unintended consequences of it. And again, um, like Patrick said, focusing on raising that standard of living. Um, this ties in again, if we're talking the relevance, because um, I know that's a big purpose with our NEPF standard one, tying in prior knowledge, connecting the relevance, the purpose. When you're getting these real world problems, it is current events. Um, these are other things that you can hit on too that just bring in that real world connections. That's, that's super important. Um, from this, if we're talking metacognition, we tie this back into the kids are constantly reflecting on, um, are they meeting these challenges? Do these assignments work? Um, so again, for our standpoint, it definitely fits in with that Nevada framework um, that we're tying in um, to help to help support everyone, um, teachers in the classroom as well. So not thinking too abstractly, it definitely relates to what we're doing on a daily basis. I just I don't want Patrick to get too bored there, so I, I just I had to throw him a bone. So um, this is what the summit is not, and uh, we make sure that we talk about this because um, you know, we're both teachers. Patrick and I are classroom teachers. Uh, we've been classroom teachers for 19 years, and so uh, whenever we get something labeled curriculum, uh, we think, "Oh my goodness, here's yet another thing I have to do." Uh, and so we we sometimes, um, you know, treat that with the holy water and the crucifix. Um, it's not turnkey economics curriculum. This is not something that uh, you get these giant binders or this network of stuff and say, OK, you have to start on day one and go through it. This is not what it is. Um, this is a supplement. Uh, and this is something that uh, that you can use um, and, and build in order to uh, to really uh, add a little bit of more of excitement to uh, a subject that that that's tough to teach. Um, it's not a complete micro macroeconomic curriculum. So this is not something if you're looking to be like, oh, how do I teach supply and demand in those? Um, this is not a step by step, uh, you know, process to 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 implement that. Um, it it specifically is focusing on international economics uh, and and really a lot of those macro areas um, because it's internationally focused. Uh, what this does is that it it provides a, a, a good connection and a good compare and contrast to American economics. Because as these students get assigned a country like South Sudan, one of the first things that they do is they start looking at the data. Well, they're consistently comparing it to the United States. So, for example, if they uh, pull up uh, a GDP per capita of, of South Sudan being $982 a year, and they jump over and see that the American um, GDP is $63,000 a year, uh, they start to ask questions. And it provides a great aha moment for kids that, you know, I think we, it doesn't matter where you live, every kid thinks that their town is boring and they think that their, uh, their town is the worst place and their school is the worst. And what tends to happen is they start to see some of these countries and they go, holy smokers. Uh, this is a poor country. Uh, just like, uh, you know, Shauna just said in the chat, they have no idea how bad other countries are. And it is just shocking to some of these students when they not only realize what the data is, but when they can draw that connection, um, that is, you just, you kind of see that magic come out in them. And, and, and I haven't felt that um, as much uh, outside of this program as when a kid really realizes like, oh, oh man, it's not as bad as I think it is here. 
when when they look at those. And so that's a huge element of this. That's this takes a lot of the teacher to do. This is not curriculum driven. Uh, this is this is that 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 teacher to look at and say like look how poor poor is and when they see things like 50 percent of the economies in the world are low income co- economies uh they you you just you you kind of you see that baffled look on them so that's a really good thing here uh this is not dependent on a licensable material patrick and i are not selling you anything uh this is state funding um, this is state funded. Uh, the license is, is owned by the state now. We just happen to be the district that is currently using it because we have been packaging this together so that we can start handing it out and training uh, schools and teachers and districts all over. Um, and, um, and and that's what this is for. The cost, uh, we, we can get that down as you get more interested, is, is quite minimal to the district in that. Um, and I kind of threw this in here. It's not AI operated. Uh, you get Patrick and I. So when you email a question, uh, you're going to get one of us to to email you back. And so, you know, we might be quirky and and uh, and, and be that teacher face because we're we're literally doing this. Uh, we've already set our summit date. Our first summit's going to be January 18th. And in a couple of weeks, we are starting to uh, put on our own. And so by January 18th, uh, again, kind of a, a, a little carrot out there. Uh, the, the best way to know what the summit is, is come see one. And so we will definitely uh, advertise for you to come and we will walk you through the whole, the whole day process right here. I just want to pause for a second. Um, if anyone has any questions so far, we're going to kind of dive into, you know, the true nature of what the, what it is. So if you do have a question, if you want to mic in or type out, Do a little bit of think time. No, I'm just trying to figure out how I get mine since I teach online. So I teach it in BLA. So gotcha. my whole classroom is online. So I'm, I'm trying to like think about, it, it, it might take me another year to be able to get through this. Like, how do I get my kids? Because our online learners just do not want to work together. Like I can force them to do in a regular classroom. Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm just trying to wrap my head around like what I can do, but I can start some of this with them. Like I, I do a standard of living, but I'm always looking for something better for my students because I want them to get those comparisons to other countries and other people because they're so very much me, 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 and they need to learn. It's not just you, you, you. Sure. And so I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how I can take this and then move it forward on in an online atmosphere. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it could absolutely be uh, delivered online. Um, the, the only problem would be the, the, the competition part is, is in person. Um, but the resources, the curriculum and everything um, it, this is something that you could have a, a, a uh, an online group of students do. Uh, they would work together. They would, because a lot of our students work, um, everything's digital that we do. So they're working online anyway to create um, and present things. And so working in that team with the, with the idea behind your, 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 um, you know, working to, to build up that infrastructure of a country. Absolutely. We could. So yeah, definitely. I'll, I can be in touch with you, Shauna, um, for that. Yeah. Between like that one. And then you said, this is Nevada bought this, right? So yes. Because CCSD is very much on this kick about what we're allowed to use and not allowed to use and approved materials and sure. yeah and yeah. all of that. So, you know, I got that other twist that I've got to figure out. <laughs> yeah. No, we've got we've got the department of the, the big bad department of education behind us on this one. So okay. So yeah, I think that one would at least that would be my 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 around. <laughs> Good, fantastic. Um, any other questions? Anybody need to ask anything? All right. So let's just jump into this. Uh, so Patrick and I are going to give you the classroom perspective um, with that idea that uh, it, it's already been implemented. You've already had the facilitation at the district or the site level. And, and people are coming to you saying, you're going to start doing this. And so that's where we're going to look right here. Um, the first part is, is the training. There's a bit of training that goes on for the teacher. Um, and this can be done. Um, th this can be done um, in in session. It can be done uh, while you're while you're walking through it. Um, 
probably the best way we've all been trained as kind of a baptism by fire is we'd come together, get the idea of how to do the, do the um, summit. We would work on it a little bit. We would meet up and make those adjustments. So the, what we're presenting and what we would provide you with um, in that, in that development setup is something that is, is truly time and tested. Uh, we have changed a lot of the original type of the econ summit to fit a bigger model. Uh, when when we adopted it, we were the largest high school in the country that was was using or the largest district in the country um, using the summit. And so we had to we had to make some things that even Boise State didn't know how to adjust. And so that's where we were at on that one. Um, delivery of resources. This would be through an LMS. Uh, we use Google Classroom um, to deliver our resources. Um, but, but again, uh, we could uh, deliver this to, to, to teachers in that probably through the same process. Eventually, we'll have a Canvas um, connection through the state. Uh, for some reason, uh, this summer, I, uh, as I was building this for the state, um, I could not get on Canvas. And so uh, I was working with Jane Maloney. She doesn't know why, uh, but what this will eventually, uh, like Sh uh, Shauna said, we, the, the Canvas um, shell will be the way that it's delivered. And so we're just having a little tech snafu in Lyon County. I don't know what the problem is, but yeah, it'll be delivered to you uh, via Canvas and everything will be uh, ready for you to implement and, um, and, and start uh, putting out there. Um, and then again, it's a blending of this system into your regular econ course. Um, so it, um, it's not, it, like I said, this is not turn page. You Once you start it, every day is the economic summit curriculum. These are many projects that you blend right in with the learning. So once the nine or 10 week part starts of the summit, this might be one or two lessons a week that you're working on the summit material. The rest is your, is your, um, is your economics curriculum that you're, that you're using. Um, a lot of it bleeds into it. Like, for example, uh, when they start to do your, their fact check and they're, and they're getting the information back, they're doing a lot of data. That's where you can jump and, and say, OK, uh, GDP per capita or you're looking at, uh, at literacy rates of the country. You're looking at their, their different um, economic sectors. Well, you jump right over to the United States and you're going to look at that same data there. So it really can drive that macro part of the instruction for economics. That's why we start it within about the, the nine week, because they have the micro behind it and the macro starts to get into there. Um, the Before the summit, the summit competition, these are mini projects. Uh, they put on that simulation half that they, they're, they're the advisors of that assigned country. Uh, and they jump through the mini projects, which every mini project they do builds into uh, the to the competition level. And so they're not doing a bunch of stuff and then getting ready with all this extra stuff. Everything is that they do will eventually build into when they go into that um, in-person competition. Can I jump in first? Yeah, go ahead. Um, a good point being made about the mini projects. Um, and again, it's not something that has to be followed um, verbatim. You do have that flexibility and what we're working on building in that Patrick's built in um, are the basics that you have to get done with your class. But then again, feel the pulse of your class and there's additional assignments you could assign them, could be extra credit for the group um, to dive a little bit deeper in. So you definitely have some flexibility to play uh, with those mini projects that are out there. So, uh, that, so that's the good part is the flexibility of this. Um, and uh, just to kind of jump through some of the mini uh, projects here, the first one here is... Um, uh, is a fact sheet. Like I said, this is just data collection. This would be, this is a more of a, of a geography kind of a lesson where they're going through and, and understanding what macro data is. Uh, they, they will dive in and, and take a look at everything um, that, that are those uh, comparison factors of country to country and economy to economy. Um, that is just that kind of introduction. Um, one of the things that they do is they will do what's called a, a written global proposal. So each one of these mini projects puts the group into a, a different type of simulation. So a smaller simulation with the ECOSOC. Um, the ECOSOC is a is the um, Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. And so this is something that's been around since the 1970s that goes through and looks and sets um, economic and social goals that are pushed out by the UN. What they do is they go through uh, and they research an ECOSOC goal, target, and um, 
and a goal that's been set by ECOSOC. And they design a global proposal. This is a policy that they would design that would impact or, or enhance uh, a problem that's going on to their country. Uh, this is not just for poor countries. Uh, we have a lot of, of very wealthy countries in the world that they might have more environmental or uh, water quality issues where ECOSOC, they would go in and say, hey, even though we're Denmark and we're, we're very wealthy, um, we have a plan here that will fix our water problems. Uh, what the proposal does is it says it really puts them into that concept that um, here's a problem that my country has. This is a problem that the region in the world has that I belong into. And this is a plan that if adopted and funded, we could implement this in anywhere in the world. So what we've done is we've built the, the global proposal around the, the same way that ECOSOC works uh, with, uh, with the representatives from the country. What comes next is they would then do, use some tech and they would take that global proposal, then they would turn it into a 60 second PSA video. So uh, what they learn a little bit in here is a little bit of marketing, a little bit of how to uh, add some tech to it, because what they're trying to do is sell their idea to the rest of the of the teams, because eventually down the line, these teams are going to vote and they're going to they're going to decide on five countries for the summit that are going to present their global proposal um, at the summit competition. And that's just one thing that they would do at the summit competition um, would be the global proposal. But right here, we do, um, we do, we have three mini projects here that we have hit an assortment of those Nevada skills um, and those Nevada standards. To write those proposals, they, they go through and they're gonna have to, to hit everything in, in terms of answering and asking questions, clarifying questions. And the big thing in this is uh, this is, is allowing them to take that personal action um, with that policy making. So we're putting them in the driver's seat of policy which uh, which is is great for those students to go through. A couple other things, they would do a strategic plan. Um, and the strategic plan is really the game part of the econ summit, the competition. Um, and this is the simulated, uh, this is the simulated trading a portion of the competition. Um, so what the students would get is they would have the certain amount of, of um, resources that they have. They, they come in physical cards. And when they show up, depending on their level, they have a certain amount of exports and they have to get rid of those exports and they have to replace them with the imports. And so their strategic plan makes them prepare for the summit. They have to go through every country. They have to know what countries are offering up, what they have and what they can sell and trade. Um, because the, the concept behind this is really a balance of trade. If they have 43 units of trade that they have to export, They've got to export that and they have to replace it with their goal of what they need to bring in aligned to their goals of how to expand their economy in the next five or 10 years. And so while this, this simulation doesn't really hit on kind of the true nature of trade um, as the um, as the as the trade is more um, uh, market focused, I mean, we don't have the United States isn't trading cars to other countries. We're opening up so that companies can trade with other companies. But what it does do is it puts that cap, uh, that hat on their head and say that you're facilitating and connecting those two there. So that's one thing that took a while is the, is the kids were thinking, oh, so countries trade these things. No, the individuals in the country trade to, to balance this trade out. And so um, the strategic plan is, is something that it, it's part of the game, if you will, um, that we would get more into uh, as we as we unpackage this down the road. And then long-term development, they have to make up a, a five to 10 year plan um, on how would they how would they deal things with education? What 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 resources are they going to put in when their economy grows to to develop a stronger economy? Uh, what resources will they put in for infrastructure, military, government, all those things? And so they have another policy plan that they have to develop within the the context of that, so that they can say like, well, we this is how we would extend expand the uh, economy of our country um, by doing those. Um, Again, uh, when, as they prepare for the summit, um, there are several things that they do. This is preparing for that big competition, uh, a table display. And I, I've got some pictures here coming up in a sec. Um, these are literally your science boards uh, that they have to fill a, a professional level science boards that they are presenting certain pieces of data to. 
uh, team representation. This is fun for the kids. They can dress in the culturally appropriate um, uh, clothing of the country they represent. And I say culturally appropriate uh, because we had one group, <laughs> I think it was from your class, uh, they wanted to dress like a turkey because they represented the country of Turkey. And so great teaching moment to talk about, you know, cultural appropriation. And, and sometimes that might not be the right thing. Uh, but it goes in for them to actually take a little bit of that honest to show up, be in person, they get to play the part, uh, adds a little bit more um, a buy in to some of your students that that are wondering why they got to show up and do this. Um, and that uh, the summit debate that goes back to the to the um, uh, the um, Standard of living. Thank you. The standard of living and the global proposal. Um, this would be uh, the teams that get selected. They would prepare and they would present their proposal very quick to a to to the summit, which on that day, in our case, is anywhere between three and four hundred students. So some students a uh, little get a little nervous, and they would then go through that debate. Very similar to how, if you look at any uh, economic summits, how those debates go between national leaders on on trying to come up with a decision. So we try to we try to make it as real as possible for these for these students to do this. Another big thing is uh, strategies for alliances. Once they get there, they have to form an alliance, a trade alliance with other countries, and that alliance has to match up with benef uh, mutual benefit. Uh, they can either trade directly for free trade. Or in some cases, we've had some alliances that pulled the political card and said, as an alliance, we're not going to trade with Russia or we're not going to trade with this group. Um, that's all part of the competition. If a team says that we're going to make sure that we kind of carve out this other country. Um, and so we get a little bit of international political play in there. And uh, it, it's always fun to see the students doing that um, as they really get into this. All right. In the U.S. Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Go ahead. Um, and we, we also bring in um, members of our district. Um, we are trying to work with uh, UNR up here in Reno, and we allow the co a college professor, um, the School of Economics comes in and they, they play the team USA. Um, so they that is a team where they anybody can trade with. You don't need alliances. It's, it's that free trade for all their resources. But we also make it out where our those professors and district employees try to have fun with the kids and make sure they're paying attention and maybe – um, trick them a little bit and trying to take advantage of them if they're not exactly 100% um, with it. So that kind of makes it a little bit real with the U.S. throwing in some curveballs, which is always a lot of fun on that day. All right. Um, so I, I'm kind of looking at the clock here. So I'm going to I'm going to speed up on some things here just so we can get uh, some some imagery here of, of what this actually looks like. So you guys actually believe this is something real. Um, but these are pictures from a variety of uh, of our summits. Um, and you can see here, um, this is the actual competition part. So everything they do builds up to this level. This is a good example here of what, what they're preparing to present at, uh, at the summit. This would be their table display. So we, we, we still use the old school kind of science board, um, but within that, uh, the purpose of these boards is they are sharing the data and information because what they're still trying to do the morning that they're setting this up is they're still trying to uh, to convince other countries to ally with them, um, whether that is through uh, the, the trade negotiations. Um, as we'll see in here, a lot of kids bring food. They'll they'll make food that's traditional to the site. That's become probably the most uh, the, the most look forward to thing at the summit. Kids get to eat all day. Um, and 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 use those things in order to not only teach the the economy, the culture, the government of the countries, but also to encourage a little bit more of that interaction with that. Um, here's an example for uh, I think this country was Germany. Um, you can see right there a little note: food is for allies only. So as you can see, uh, they 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 really do get into this um, uh, this form of it. Um, that picture to the right: um, this is our judging, and so uh, this is a competition, and so. Putting on a summit, it entails a lot of volunteers that you can get um, right in your district or in your community. It's super easy to train these folks up. Um, and, the, and the resources that that uh, we'll provide uh, once you get into this, we we have everything of it. We will have everything available for you to train up the, the the people that are doing it. You can take any of these folks off the off the street and within a couple of hours, they already know how to to run the summit. 
it's super, it's really not that complex for that. Uh, but it does take, it does take quite a bit of, uh, of involvement for volunteers to put on the competitive summit. Um, a little bit more here. Uh, what, what's really good is that engagement with the students. They are for, for this summit competition, they are wheeling and dealing. They are, they are having to meet with multiple people. They have uh, leadership within their group. They have to come up with compromises and decisions. Sometimes because there's three or four folks, one kid might go and trade something and they didn't realize that the team had decided we don't trade with that country. So you get a little bit of, uh, uh, of controversy within to that. And uh, it, it's just, it's great to see these kids uh, and, and, and in our case, our seniors kind of going out and you get to see all of their skills as an, uh, as a student um, before you get to release them to the hounds uh, known as the, the world market economy. And so it's super rewarding. Um, I think as a teacher, um, for, for that respect. Um, just a couple couple things here. You can start to see a little bit of the um, of the display of uniforms or cultural. Um, some students, a lot of students, they just create a t-shirt. Um, some of them will uh, will go in and just dress uh, business uh, professional. And you get some students that, you know, we, we have, we've got them, they, they, they want to challenge it. That's fine. It's not the, the most important thing of the summit is not them dressing up. It just, it makes it a little bit more authentic, a little bit more fun to pay attention in. Um, and I, I just put this picture in here um, with this kid. Uh, he was from Spain and um, he was a foreign exchange student from Spain and I didn't pay attention and he got to be Spain. And so uh, they did really well. Uh, and, uh, and, and I kind of forgot, didn't pay attention. Uh, but, um, you know, we, as we have foreign exchange students, they, I think love it just as much as, as our, as our students, because, you know, they might be having some of those stories that, you know, Americans were kind of deaf to the world and we don't know how the rest of the world works and all those things. And they get in there and they provide a, a really cool perspective um, on those systems. So if you do have a, a lot of foreign exchange students, which they're starting to come back in, at least in our district after COVID, um, it's, it's super good for them as well. All right. You want to go into major concepts? Lose. Shoot. Sorry, let me put that down. Okay, so major concepts we see the importance of the standard of living. Um, and again, a lot of this is put onto the data sheet, that fact sheet that goes onto um, the board. Again, from that fact sheet, once they go through the standard of living and a lot of health data as well, then they can, um, that helps guide them for their, um, their proposal they're going to put forth. Um, the factors impacting growth, sustainability of a national economy. Uh, again, this ties in with some of those long-term development goals that are talking about and how long it's actually going to take to implement, um, how industries develop, grow, and sustain. So again, we're trying to have them raise the standard of living and look, look for those long-term impacts and those consequences down the road. Um, here we have the role of the global economic system in our daily lives. Um, just getting them understanding the importance, I think, of that of the trade that is a that is a um, a large part of this um, summit day, and it is a lot of interaction. Um, the students are able to look at some of the exports, and they're able to prep. But just understanding how the exports and imports and trade does affect their daily lives, um, and, it, and it ties in with real world problems when we had some of the shortages and the supply chain issues. This was something we brought into the summit and we talked about in class. Um, and again, these are uh, international organizations they might not be aware of, um, but we definitely use them as data sets and they can go um, to the UN websites, to the World Economic Forum, the World Bank, and um, use that as an aid and help with the evidence and the resources. And uh, just to add on to that, um, we both uh, we both also teach a, a government class. And so we we do one semester and then it flips. Um, one thing that's really good about this as well is you get you get kind of two different flavors of the of the fall and the spring um, semesters of, of the summit, because in the fall they haven't taken government yet. Um, and then in the spring they have. And so um, a lot of times I noticed when, once we switched from this is the spring one, uh, the, 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 the students tend to be a little bit more politically motivated um, and, and look at it more in that political sense. And so you really see that kind of uh, combination of the political 
um, institutions and the economic institutions uh, coming across, which which is again which is again pretty cool to see. Um, oh, and then some more student walkways. You want to take these? You want me yeah, to grab them? You know. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, we oh, let me put them here. out there for you. Um, and this is this is a one again that ties in with government again. If we're looking at competing economic models, when you're looking at different countries around the world, um, so again that ties in with the real world examples that we we want to make those connections with relevance. Let's see. Okay, and then social concerns. Do we have anything more behind that? Um, economic systems and how they impact access to the goods and services. Services. Um, global poverty is a big thing, especially when we start looking and they start looking into those fact sheets. We use um, the CIA World Factbook, which is a big one, and that really does a great job comparing um, countries, um, comparing, look at the poverty, and again, the relative, what it would be like in South Sudan versus the GDP of the United States. Um, the future role of American markets in the global economic system, um, again, predicting, um, looking in the future for trade, and the role of all economic economies play in the global economic interdependence. And then this is a big one, I think. I was trying to emphasize a little bit this in the beginning, tying into a lot of these NEPF standards, um, but it is project-based learning. We do want the students to think of the problems and work through that together. This definitely um, hits the critical thinking skills when they do have to work together, think about the impact. Um, I know that's big with the NEPF standard two is um, going into deeper level learning. Discourse and student discussion is huge. Um, making them compromise, making them work together. Again, it says the relevance and the real world connections, um, team building and group collaboration. And with the team building, I've noticed a lot of students who maybe are introverts really come out with the students that might not be so academically minded in the classroom really do a good job um, at the summit, making those connections, kind of beg borrowing and stealing and trying to get the information from others and trying to make deals. They have a lot of fun with that. And then again, public speaking and debate because they are presenting to um, the volunteers, and then we try to turn the last two, the top two, into a debate amongst themselves. So they're able to ask questions, follow up questions, and it really puts them on the spot. So a lot of a lot of good stuff that could come from this from, from what the students say as well. Um, we have a question here from Shauna. She said, have you had any students that had already taken AP Human Geography do this? So um I know in my high school, we don't even, we don't offer um, AP human geography. Do you guys? Um, we, we don't offer AP. Um, I teach geography for sophomores. Um, and I do a basic version of this standard of living, especially when I hit Africa and the Middle East. Um, we do a looking into problems that those regions are experiencing and try to fix solutions and raise the standard of living. But those are sophomores um, and just trying to introduce it, but we don't have any AP human geography right now. Um, it, oh. I was just going to say, yeah. we, well, in CCSD, AP Human is a freshman class, mm, so we do that. this with our with our freshmen, and I was just thinking about, and I've had a few kids that I taught AP Human who ended up in my government and econ class, um, just one, like, there's a lot of stuff, CIA World Factbook, whether it's regular geography, AP Human Geo is great, we use that for a lot of things. And I was just wondering if you had seen that, but if you don't have that class, you wouldn't have seen it. Those kids would actually probably come into this on a whole nother level um, because of the stuff that is discussed. Um, maybe yeah. that's something that you could take in your regular geography class and pull some of it, like for the human portion of geography. Patrick, you could probably pull some of the standards from AP Human that might actually enhance what you're going to be doing in this summit with your seniors. So it, um, I would agree. Yeah, I think I think that would be a great idea. Um, trying to give them at least some of that prior knowledge. So you're right; they do come in more prepared. And if you're if you have that ability to kind of prep the kids at a younger age, I think that would be fantastic. Absolutely. And, and Sean, it's it's funny that you said that because this summer I've I've really been re redrafting kind of the curriculum that I use behind mine, and I almost extensively use uh, the AP World uh, World Geography uh, concepts, 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm trying a little bit uh, a different um, a stance on how to teach global economics. I'm going to go big time into models of economic development uh, and and literally taking it those models from human geography and applying them to this structure uh, because it 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 tells such a better story of how um, of how the interaction occurs. So I, I absolutely agree that, and then and I, I'm actually shaping it that way for myself. It's just, it, yeah, it, I taught geography in Texas for many, many years, um, which is a freshman level course. So um, I always have freshmen and seniors in Texas. Yeah. And then, but you, we took, because it was a pre-AP class, we took the AP Human Geo um, courses through like Rice, you know, through the AP Institute. And then when I moved to Nevada, that was the other thing, AP Human Geo and government <laughs> were the two. And I realized as I started teaching econ here that, oh, wait, oh, wait, I taught this in AP Human and I pull from my AP Human curriculum and I use some of my stuff in my econ course with my students. Mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of shared that with other teachers. But as you were talking about this summit and I was thinking, you know, some of this is like sounding like so familiar. And I was like, wait a minute, AP Human Geo. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing is, is especially in the content that I found with with teaching internet or with with international economics, economics just tends to leave the story unanswered. It just says, hey, there's a market economy and everybody needs to fulfill their goods and needs. And we just go out and sell trade and barter. And there's so much more to that. Uh, the human side of it that I have always put in because I want my students to know the whole picture. And a lot of that picture is is sitting there in those in those geography standards uh, that I want them to know. Yeah, I just like I said, I I pull my projects and stuff from there, and I've kind of thrown them in, and writing you know curriculum for CCSD and stuff like that. I've I've been pulling from those to yeah. add to econ. Yeah. Um, so, but sure. It and I can I can share the the stuff that I've 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 completed over the summer and I'm I'm just finishing up. I can share that stuff with you and have you take a look at how I want it, how I'm going to use it. Um, and, uh, okay. Definitely share that with you. So absolutely, yeah, that would be great. I'm always up for sharing. <laughs> sure, you're. So uh, what you're seeing right now is uh, this is how uh, we have um, this is how we kind of put our summit together. We use Google Classroom up in our in our county. Uh, but like I said, it, this will be available through Canvas um, uh, in, in, a, in a bit of time. But what we do is um, this is how we push everything out for the students um, and the teachers. Uh, we, we communicate kind of on the back end through, um, through email and that. Um, but I just wanted to show you a couple things in here um, for, for some of the assignments that they would do. Um, so, for example, uh, the country fact sheet, it, it's not simply just here's a, a, a bunch of blanks, go fill out what your numbers are and go. Um, what we do is we build everything around um, a grasp model. Um, and that grasp model is um, just a way to write a, a different type of a simulation. And the grasp just stands for goal, role, audience, situation, and products. So I just wanted to show you this as an example um, just to kind of highlight how we place the, the assignments into more of a simulation. So in this goal, again, they've developed their, their uh, teams. They've gotten their country. This is the first way that they're going to get introduced to it. Um, and again, the role, you and your team members are the top advisors to your country's government. You're the best that your country has to offer. And so we give them a task. You're, you're working for this. The audience um, on this specific one is they are working through a department within their country's government, um, and they are there to present something to their government regarding the, the current state of their, their economic status. Um, and then it builds into the situation. And then the products, this one would be their, um, would be their, uh, their uh, uh, data sheets. Um, and the data sheet would simply look just like any kind of uh, sit and get, go out and find data, um, it would look more like um, like what we use is we use Google Forms, so everything's digital. <laughs> they would go in and collect that data um, just on various country fact sheets. And then what they would do to finish this up as a, as a product is they would write something that we call the letter of finding. 
And what they're doing is, again, this is taking what they learned, uh, taking those connections, and then they're drafting a letter. We have a template set up where they're now presenting this letter to their government. Um, and this would be the first project that they're going through and doing. So they're already thinking uh, in the policy making process. They're already thinking uh, within the structures of, of, the, of the government and economic system of their country. So they have to go in and get this background knowledge and really start to build uh, within this. So this is an example of, of one of the one of the simplest versions or, or easiest versions of what they would do. Um, I know sometimes we like to see uh, or uh, we like to to look at the videos that they made. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I do want to show you a sample of um, a, a sample of what one of the global proposal videos would look like. And so um, let me jump in here and let's grab. Give me one sec. Let's go here. Um, because this is one area where you can kind of see um, how their uh, how their policy making plan is starting to develop and go. So I'm just going to pick one here. Um, let's go Syria. So this country was Syria, and uh, you know they look through and to see um, you know to develop to, to develop this plan. I if it's not working, just someone just wave at me and say I can't hear it or anything. Oh, I no, I don't want this one. This was uh, this would be a non-example. I'm sorry, this would be a non-example um, of of some students that uh, didn't take the uh, the assignment too serious. So um, here's a good one. So again, this would be the the last part of it. So I I they they chose just to make this video, um, just to go through and be um, just a, a sixty second just intro to to what goes on. Um, these the the students can develop. Um, you know they have some pretty good skills on the video and that. But as you can see this rolling out here, they're looking at the problems. They're looking at um, how they would go and adjust those policies. So this would be the, the end product of their global proposal, their written global proposal um, that they would go through uh, and develop that plan um, to carry it out. Um, I'll just show you one more example. Uh, who was the winner? I was trying to remember here. Ecuador is pretty good. This might have some sound to it. So again, very simple, but you can see where they're going in and they're pulling through, um, making um, some of those uh, adjustments, some of those settings for um, their goals. Um, so anyway, um, that would, that's just one area of the product that, that they would be looking at. Um, just in the last minute here, I would just give you a peek at what, what would be available um, in forms of um, making this your, if if you you or your district is gonna um, start to to do this and what that would look like, um, if you if you want to start using this, what you're gonna get from us is you're gonna get um, everything that's breaking down the facilitator resources. This is how to start and carry out an entire summit at your school or carry out it at a district wide. Um, so you're going to have facilitator resources, logistics, everything from summit planning guides. So this is going to incorporate everything to, to do the back channel of getting it ready for the summit competition. Um, there's going to be the curriculum component here where you, all you do is put that onto your own LMS or send that out to the teachers. They would be able to go through and, and, um, and implement that in the classroom. And then we, I will have some training um, uh, videos and how to carry out the competition from there. 
And so really everything would be uh, in a in a bag for you to go through and start uh, pulling out and looking at. Um, obviously, you can come and um, and see our summits um, is, is going to be um, is going to be January uh, 18th here in Lyon County. So if you are somewhat local, um, you uh, definitely can come check out um, uh, check out that um, at at our school um, and, and really get kind of the 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 gist of, of how this goes. So I'm, I, I think we're done on time. Um, try to get it crammed in there the best we could. But uh, if you do have any last minute questions, you can go ahead. I, I'll, I'll stick around. Um, and then uh, Brittany did say after the session, please attend the closing session for the raffle. Um, so uh, don't miss out on those raffle. But if you did fill out that form um, at the beginning, I have your information. I've got all that. I will personally email you and, and we'll start getting connected and I can, I can answer those more specific ones. So um, thanks for attending. I I'm, I'm glad that uh, you, we have some interest in here. And so um, the form is at the beginning of the, the form that I asked or put out there is at the beginning of the chat box, but I will put it out there again. I think, where is it? Thank you guys. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Let's copy. And I'm going to post that link one more time. So that will just allow you to uh, fill that out. And so I can get some information from you on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, she pushed them out. Yeah. I think they did. Cool. All right. Was Great. that? Thank you, guys. Yeah. Do you need anything else from us? I'll I'll jump over to that other link for the closing session. Is that yeah, it? I think that's it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye.